it's me Sabrina from Little Nerd Crafts and I got something special for you today. Yes, this is going to be a Eevee Pokemon clock and took me about six days of working on to get finished with everything and I'm very proud of the way it turned out. So let's just get started. First of course I draw the Pokemon ball and here I took just an embroid embroidery hoop, I can't talk, that you can get cheaply at Walmart or any craft store and just used part of it. And I sprayed it off with spray paint. The reason why, because acrylic resin will not stick to spray paint. So when it hardens and dries, I can peel it off, which you'll see later on. And I'm taking a very thin aluminum wire. You can get this again on Amazon. Very cheap. It's easy to get a hold of. I like it because the resin will actually adhere to it. And it does really great for a lot of projects. And I hope this inspires you to do a wide range of projects with this. So you can see I'm just bending it out. It's so easy to bend that you can literally do it with your fingers. But if you want to get a really perfect circle, just grab the closest bottle that's about the right size that you want. Okay, now as you can see, really easy. Uh, I'm just taking a pair of little clips that you can get, again, any craft store should have them. Um, people use them for a variety of range of things. And I'm going to make the top, the bottom, and the middle circle. And that's just to keep the resin, when I color it, from flowing from one to the other and give us a nice clean edge inside of the broidery hoop. I think everything around me is squeaking today, but that's besides the point. Now, after I get it exactly where I want it, I'm going to set it to the side because I need something to secure it down with. The next step in this. And there you see I'm using round nosed pliers. You can get them for jewelry. Um, they're very small, they're easy to use, and they work great. Most of the time you can get them in a pack so you can actually get the clippers with the round nose at the same time. Or you can just get a hobby kit that has got some in it too. Both of them work phenomenally well for what I use them for anyway. You can see I'm trying to find the right size ball. I think I found one. So I'm just going to take the aluminum and I'm just wrapping it around getting that nice circle. Perfect circle for the size I needed. Now this is mirror tint film. The reason why I use this is because it's got a very sticky backing. And it'll stick to the things that I need it to stick to. And it actually comes off clear once the resin hardens. If it's still in the soft stage, it'll want to stick to it. But once it hardens, you can actually peel it off just like you would if you had it on a window. Um, I just wouldn't leave it on there for days at a time. But just for the amount of time it takes for the resin to cure hard, not squishy stage, but the hard, crack, the hard stage, then yes, it will peel off. And the trick to everybody out there, how did I peel it off so easy, is you can take two pieces of tape, one on both sides, and it will just peel apart. 
it's as easy as that. And you can see I'm just lining it up using that original picture I did to line up the embroidery hoop where I need it. Next, I'm taking the little circle and I'm putting it in the spot where I need it, sticking it down. And as you can see, it's not moving. It, it is stuck there. It's not a hard stick, but it is a stick to keep it in place. And it'll give the back of it a nice, slight, shiny surface. I can't talk today. Excuse me. And what I'm doing here is I'm just lining it up, making sure I got it where I want it. I'm sorry for my light. It's really bright on here. And I'm making sure it fits. If it hangs off a little bit, I just clip it away. I'd rather have too much than not enough. So it, I'd rather have to clip it down a little bit than have not enough and then have this big gap that you have to fill in. Because that's never good. The whole point is to have a nice separated line. A kind of thick line. So you can definitely tell the different colors and to keep them separate. But since the resin will stick to this aluminum, it's great because then you don't have to worry about it peeling off like it will the uh, spray painted wood that's around it. And you can see I just got it tightened down at the edge. Now that I got that secured in place. I'm just going to trim around the edge to get it as close as possible. I do not want to clip it at the edge. I want a little excess over. That way I can tape it down to the hoop so I can get a nice seal all the way around. That way the resin won't leak out. So you're basically making your own mold with this. And since it sticks to the side, that's great. And you can peel it off, which it don't leave residue or anything, which works phenomenally well. Um, unless you really want the mirror look. Now, if you do want the mirror look on this Pokemon ball, then leave it on there. You can just trim it down once it dries. Just trim it right down to the wood. Um, that works perfectly fine. But for me, I want to peel it off because I want the see-through backing. So I'm just going to trim close, but not quite on the edge and what I got here is just a plain paint painters tape so I can peel it off and it won't leave too much residue on the side. If you don't use powder tape, I'd rather have the blue, but I'm out at the moment. So, you know, I got to do with what I got to do. Now you can see I'm just folding it over and it sticks really well. But just to be on the safe side, I am adding the tape. You don't have to, but I would recommend it. Because once you get a resin leak and that resin finds a hole, it's going to all come out. And then you're going to have a sticky mess on your hands. And... I don't want it all over my desk. <laughs> that would be a, a official Greek tragedy right there. And I'll just do this process all the way around. You see that beautiful shiny surface. And it helps straighten it out and pull the edges a little bit. So you get a nice flat shiny surface. Because you don't want no wrinkles in there. Unless you really want wrinkles. Which you can do that. As you can see, I'm using very also very little tape as possible. I don't want to use over too much, except for where the hoop 
connects. Now there I will use a little bit more tape because of the fact that that is where the hoop connects and it has a more of a high possibility of it leaking out there than anywhere else. So there's the place that I'm really going to add a little bit more extra tape just to make sure that I don't have any leakage. Because there's nothing worse than thinking your project's great, you go to bed, you wake up to find out you've got a puddle of resin all over your desk. And been there, done that, don't want to happen again. <laughs> helpful hint. I don't do it on this project, but if you were doing something like this and you're really not sure and you're questioning the fact that the resin might just leak out, um, lay a paper towel or two or three underneath the spot where you think it's going to leak. Uh, if you're working on a very small project, then you can lay it directly on the paper towel as long as it's not touching the surface of your project because if it does leak it's going to leak into the paper towel the paper towel is going to soak it up and then it'll harden and you can just clip it right off but if it's stuck to your project then you got more cleanup so if you do use a paper towel to soak up the resin just in case it does leak make sure it's not touching your project so put it up like on a red solo cup or something like that that way it doesn't go anywhere else okay now what i'm going to do next is take uv resin and i'm not going to use a lot of uv resin i mostly use uv resin for very small projects because it is fast and it takes three anywhere from three to five minutes depending on the depth for it to cure with a light and I would recommend that if you're using it where you're going to be looking directly in the light, especially on a shiny surface, that you do use safety glasses, UV resistant safety glasses. But since I'm not going to be looking directly on the light and I'm just going to have it laying on the project, then I don't have too much to worry about. But if you're using it, to shine it where the light is definitely going to be reflective at your eyes, I would definitely recommend the glasses to be on the safe side. Now, what I'm using here is a regular resin that's going to last for a couple days. Um, no, I'm not using gloves, uh, but I actually physically won't be touching the resin. Um, God, I've worked with resin a lot. Um, I should start using gloves for this, uh, but I've been lucky enough not to get it on my hand so far. I don't know how I managed it, but I have. <laughs> now, I use a, just a couple drops of pigment, and then I'm going to add some mica powder to give it a slight shimmer, but it's not using a lot, so it's still going to be quite see-through translucent this, which is what I want um, I really like the mica powders they give a shimmer effect plus some good swirl effects too if you're looking for that I personally love the way it looks but to each their own you could just use the resin dye which would still make it translucent um, but I like the mica powder effect so I wanted to really try that.
Now I'm going to first start with the black in the middle. And when you pour this, just so you won't have a chance of overflowing, I would recommend you fill it up about halfway up the aluminum. I wouldn't go all the way up to the top and make it bubble over because if you do that, you have a chance of it spilling over into the next one. And that's a very thin piece of aluminum. It ain't going to take much for one color to go into the next. So to keep yourself from having to watch it all night long or all day and babysit, I would recommend halfway. As you can see, this is not enough to fill this up. I'm not using that much. I'm just going to spread it out. And drying time, I'm going to set it off to the side in a flat surface that's level and just let it cure that way. That way, I don't have to worry about it spilling over into the next one. But I will look at it every now and then to make sure during the hardening process that it doesn't have a chance to spill. If you do, so, do, do see some leakage, you take just a little tiny popsicle stick or and just scrape it out and then move more resin into the place. And as you can see, there's a little like tube in the middle of this. I, it's really hard to see, but it's a plastic tube. And what I did is for the clock purpose, I do not want to have to drill this. So I took a plastic tube and cut it down really small. This is from a dropper that you get with resin, the tube part at the end. I just took and cut that in half and made me a little circle because it fit perfectly over top of the clock. So I went ahead and stuck that down. That way the resin will cure around it and when it dries I can just pop that piece right out without it sticking. Now that it's cured, I wish it was this fast in real life, but of course it's not. Um, I am just taking some regular clear Elmer's glue because I want it to dry clear. And I am just putting a very thin amount down and spreading it out with a paintbrush. That way it gets tacky very quick and it will not be see-through. You can actually see through it through the resin. It will not hurt anything. And of course I mess up. So I have to take these off and redo it because everyone knows that the red is on top and the white is on bottom. And what did I do? I put the white on top and the red on bottom because I was going by where they connected. i using this, so I don't know why I did that. But of course, I did it before it dried completely, so no harm done, no foul. <laughs> Everybody's going to make mistakes. The good thing about art, you can hide your mistakes. Now, once I restuck them where I wanted them and made sure it was right, I'm not worried about it. The resin, the craft hoop being on the edge and upside down because that's the least of my concerns. I'm not really worried about that because I will be popping that off later. And for a bonus, the reason why the letters are purple and not gold is because. Previously, before I shot the video, I decided that I was going to make this glow in the dark. So, when you shine a UV flashlight on this or the sun hits it, it will charge it up. And anything you see purple will glow at, at night, which is fabulous. I love the fact that it glows in the dark. Now, while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and work on all the EVs. And how I got this 
is I just went and got a clear piece of clear um, acrylic and you can get this either a tray at a serving one of those aluminum serving trays the top of it that's clear you can just cut that off and once you put it in resin it, that's it actually the clear part will disappear and you will not be able to see it which works great and I'm doing this upside down so I can turn around and take the time of painting over top of it and make sure it looks nice without having to worry about messing up too bad because as long as you think about hey this is what it's going to look back once I flip it over you'll actually see all the details come out but it looked a little messy at first Now let's just speed this up a little bit because I know you do not want to see me paint every single one of these little babies because they are kind of small. way it will not be see-through well you can't really see through it that makes the colors on the back side of it pop really good but you got to make sure to paint very very thick so your colors will pop and as soon as I get this last Evie the main Evie your first painted I will flip it over and we can actually see the details And we're just about there. And here comes the reveal. One, two, and three. Look how pretty those turned out. And you can print off this off just a regular printer. Look for Evie Evolutions. Now, once that's dry, because of course in a video it's for me, it's drying instantly. For you, it might take a while. But once it dries solid, you're going to clip these out. Get as close to the edge as you can. You do not have to go fine detail. You can make it kind of chunky. Don't worry about it. Just as long as you can get each EV out. Okay, and for that last little Evie, 
my air conditioner starts up and now we have a rumble so I'm not pulling out the middle yet I'm gonna wait until or doing the edge until after I get the Eevees in there Our next step take the resin already pre-mixed since it's a flush flat surface I can take a little lighter and just blow out all the bubbles just run it over there real quick and get out all the bubbles if this was a more enclosed spot I would be, have a little bit harder time and I'm making sure to go all over everything to go in every little detail because if you don't it is going to make bubbles And yes, I put little paw prints all the way between each of the numbers. Those do glow in the dark, which is absolutely cute uh, to see at night. I seen them glowing on my desk when I woke up in the morning. It was beautiful. I loved it. I also did the hands of the clock glowing in the dark too, which makes a really cool effect. Now, once I get a nice, shiny surface that's flush, because I want to make sure there's no little holes there because I need something to put the EVs in. So it needs to be a little deep. Not all the way full yet. I am not making this all the way full. I am just making it full enough to put my EVs in there. And a trick to put the EVs in there so it won't cry, cause bubbles behind it, each one of the EVs, I'm going to take a throwaway paintbrush a paintbrush that is beyond its expiration date in other words it is so bushed out you cannot paint a straight line with it um i'm going to just take an old paintbrush that has had its days and i'm going to paint the back of it with resin this will give resin to resin sticks really well and you'll get a lot less bubbles that way uh, especially if you put it in there at an angle, then the bubbles can roll out. And you can take the end of the paintbrush and just kind of push the EV down. And you can see I'm taking a torch and I'm just popping all the bubbles, making sure there ain't no bubbles in there before I lay the EVs down. And I'll start with the largest, which is there's our EV. And as you can see, you can see the edge of it right now. But once I cover it in resin, see that line? It just completely disappears. And then magically, it looks like I just painted the Eevee in the resin, which works absolutely beautiful. It works good every time. And the paints I use are just normal acrylic paints, something that you can get really cheap. And I'm just going to slowly work my way around, making sure each one of the EVs, all the bubbles are popped. Then I give it a nice coat before I put it down. And then it's got a nice coat over top of it to seal it in place where I want it. And since it takes a while for this resin to harden, I have the time to move it around and make sure I get it where I want it. That each one of them is visible, that they're where I want them, and once they're in there, they're easier to slide around. Now, by some chance, they do make more ED evolutions out there, then I guess I'm going to have to add them to the clock later. But for now, this is all the ones I know of, which I love Evie. She's my girl. And I love all the evolutions. If I was a trainer, I would have them all. Now, since 
Flareon here is on the brim of the aluminum that I use to separate the malt. Then she's going to stick out a little bit higher, but I want to make sure that the resin coats her and as much underneath her as possible because what I don't want is a whole bunch of bubbles. Same thing here. You can see we're still missing one and my favorite is coming up. And I need a place for th this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to go, no, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't like where it's placed. Because you can't see black on the black really good. So I'm going to just scoot them over. And adjust until I get them exactly where I want them. Now keep in mind, if you have them floating on top of the resin, they are going to shift. They're going to move. They're not going to go where you want them to go and stay there. <coughs> but if you take and put them in there and push them down, it's kind of like a suction effect. It will stick in place. Now I'm just going to take the rest of the resin and fill up what areas I need. And I don't really want to fill this full yet because we still have more to add on. So I want to give room because I don't want this too thick and I don't want it heavy because it is going to be hanging on a wall. Now, you're asking, how are you going to hang this on the wall? I'm popping that hoop off. It really don't take a lot. I took a, not a picture frame, but a canvas and I tore the canvas part off of it. Um... And I painted it black and I took just regular um, project board that you can get at Walmart that kids use to do projects on. And I cut that down and filled in the inside of that frame. And spray painted it black except for the top and the bottom, which is the red and the white. Remember, because I told you I wanted it see-through. The reason why, I wanted this to shine a little bit. To give it a reflective see-through surface. Like, kind of like the ball's almost made of crystal. Um, so I wanted it to give a really shiny look. So first, I'm going to paint it red. And the bottom, I'm going to paint white. Don't have to be perfect, but I do want to fill in all the edges because ne the next part is the reason why. Now I'm just going to paint this over white. So that only takes a few minutes to dry because the red's already dry. Now I'm taking Mod Podge, everybody's favorite, and I use Extra Glossy here. Now you can see I'm not taking, this is not a trick of the camera, I'm not taking my time. I'm actually just going to go ahead and put this on the red because the red should already be dry because I did a very, very thin coat of red. And I'm just taking the glitter, putting it straight in the Mod Podge, and then painting it on there. The Mod Podge, the extra glossy, takes very little time to dry. 
And as long as you do thin coats, you can pretty much just go coat on top of coat pretty quick. And then just set it to the side for drying. But being extra glossy, it's going to give a tacky feel until it fully dries, which is great because that's going to help seal one project to the next. And I did cut out a square where the circle's supposed to go. Yes, I know it's supposed to be a circle. That's supposed to be the button to open up the ball. But I wanted a square because that's where we're going to put the place for our clock. So make sure you lay the clock back of the clock piece down and just circle around it and then cut out a nice hole for that. Now that I feel that this is full glittered up, and you can see I'm just taking tape and putting over top of my little tiny cup. That'll help it from drying out too quick. So I can go ahead and do the white, and then add the glitter to that, mix it up really good, and you can just put it on. I know it's really hard to see the white, um, but once the glitter dries, you'll, it'll, you'll actually be able to see a little bit more. It'll be a little bit more shimmer in there. And the whites do take a couple of coat coats because it's so clear. I tried to find a thicker white, but it just wasn't available. And again, the tape over the cup trick keeps it from drying out. Now that it's fully dry, I'm going to take another, I'm taking a layer of the clear Palmer's glue, and I'm really putting that on there. And I'm just taking a paintbrush because it's water-based. I don't have to worry about anything happening. In other words, if it spills, it's easy cleanup not to worry about it. And I'm just coating just the ball. And I'm taking our clock face and laying it in the direction that I want it to go. pushing down so it'll actually make a clear surface. I put a, quite a lot because I wanted a really good seal for when it dries. Now that it's dried, I took a little painter's tape, went around the frame, took a little wood glue and attached the little circle that you can see at the very corner and the very top. That is going to be where you can hang it from. Now, I'm taking resin, and I'm going to pour over the entire thing. I'm doing it over top of the clock surface to give it a nice smooth edge. And I'm doing it to the back to seal the clock face to the mount that I made for it. And as you can see, the glitter underneath there really gives a more 3D effect to the ball, which I really liked the way it turned out. And again, I'm taking another throwaway paintbrush because I never throw away any of my paintbrush. No matter how bad they get, I can use them for something else. Keep that in mind. You can always use it for something else. So, until it dries with resin and then it's hard as rock, you got to throw it away. 
I don't know. You might be able to use it for a scraper. <laughs> um, but seriously. Uh, so what I'm doing here, just going over it to make sure that it feels every little nook and cranny. And that all the EDs are secured in place. And to give it the nice shiny surface on top. And I think off camera I gave it a secondary one. Because the first one there were some little gaps that appeared. So I did gave it a second coat. Which really gave it the surface I want. Which you'll be seeing here in a minute. Um, I didn't show the second one but yes I did give it a second coat because I felt like the first one just was not enough resin to do it so I gave it just the same amount a second time and then there was gave it the surface I wanted the surface texture And you can see there's the back. Now I'm going to set that off and let it dry. Once it dries, because I have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to find all the pieces for the clock. So here we go. It's nice and dry. I took out the painter tape. It fits perfectly in the hole because remember I told you, do you lay it down and mark it out? So, to make sure it fits. And it's aligned and everything like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put the little... Oh, excuse me. It's been late. Put the little rings on there. And I'll take my needle nose. And thank you, Lazy Susan, for making my job easy and putting that on pretty quick. And I'm just putting the pieces on there. As you can see, they're purple on the end. That's why I uh, coated them with the UV. I tried to shoot you a picture of this as it glowed in the dark, but due to the camera equipment right now, that's just not possible. Um, but I'm hoping to do more glow in the dark and later on show you what this does look like glow in the dark. But for right now, I wanted to show you that this is very easy to do. Uh, here I am setting the clock. We are almost done. And there you go, guys. A beautiful ED and evolution clock. Thanks, guys. Be safe out there. And don't forget to like and follow for more. I'll see you later.